So John, St. John, chapter number 15. John is the fourth book of the New Testament. And we're going to read a few verses here. I did it the first Sunday. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to read uh, this or I'm going to read this in your hearing. When I drop out, OK, if I drop out, you just say the word or you keep reading. OK, um, but and let me tell you why we're standing, because who's speaking to us here? That's right. Jesus, the Christ, God is speaking to us and we want to reverence his presence. OK, so Jesus says, I am the what? true vine and my father is the what the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes it away and every branch that does bear fruit he does what he prunes and may uh, so that it may bear more fruit already you are clean because the word that i have spoken to you this is a key verse here he says abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it does what abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide where in me. OK. In verse number five, he says what? I am the what? The vine. One more time. He says what? I am the what? And you are the what? the branches and whoever abides in me and I am uh, I in him he it is or she it is that person bears much fruit for apart from me you can do stuff no no apart from me you can do a little bit no no apart from me you can hustle Uh, -uh. apart from me you can do nothing but he doesn't stop right there. He says, if anybody does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. I'm going to read that again because you need to hear that. If you abide. So so this is a. Uh, uh, um. This is a I can't think of the word I'm looking for right now. This is a conditional promise. OK, he's saying if you abide, everybody say abide. He says if you abide in me, but he doesn't start right there. He says if my words do what abide in you, ask whatever you wish. We can't skip the first part and just say ask whatever you want. OK, you got to abide in him and he abides in you and it will be done for you. By this, the father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciple. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be on E. No, 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 no. OK, that your joy may be on one fourth of a tank. Somebody drove here this morning with one fourth of a tank. He said, I don't want your joy to be on E or one fourth of a tank. He said, how do I want your joy to be? Full. OK, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man in this than somebody lays down his life for his friends. Last verse. You are my friends if you do what I command. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that it's already speaking to us. It's already encouraging us, challenging us and changing us. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to continue to read this word, but also let it read us. Our hearts, our minds, our intentions. Don't let us only be hearers of the word, but let us be doers also. Everybody who believes it says what in Jesus name? What? Amen. You can have your seats. I have no idea what I'm going to call this message here today, um, but I'm going to uh, let you know before I end here what the message is going to be called. I know I have my timer. I don't know where it is right now. So I'm, it's behind the thing. Where is it? Oh, thank you. See, see teamwork. OK. Just set this for two hours and then we'll be ready. <laughs> OK. Jesus has a bunch of statements 
that he classified. This is another fun study, okay, for my Bible uh, uh, scholars or people who want to dive more into God's word or spend more time in God's word. And you're like, I don't know where to go. Jesus has about seven statements where he says, I am. OK, he says a bunch of things that I am. And one of them is this. He says, I am the true vine. Matter of fact, this is one of the last things that he says. And it's always important for us to pay attention how Jesus defines himself, because he is letting us know part of his character. OK, so he says, I am the true vine. Now, what does that communicate to us? When he says, I am the true vine, he's letting us know there are phonies out here. He is letting us know that there are some Louis, Vuitt Louis Vuittons and there's some Fui Vuittons. OK, there are some people that have a natural hairline like me. And then there are the Steve Harvey's of the world that used to have a man piece. Do you hear me? OK, he's saying that 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 there are are some um, 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 what are those uh, uh, shoes, man? Balenciagas. I don't know because I ain't never had none and I probably won't have some. And there are some that look like that. OK, I used to have a friend that uh, he used to in high school. He used to specialize in spotting fake Jordans. OK, but the reason why he could know what the fake was like is because he had experience with the real one. And Jesus is saying to you and I, I am the true vine. Uh huh. In other words, watch me. Whatever it is you're looking for this morning, it's in Jesus. Not only whatever it is you're looking for, whatever it is you need is in him. Whatever it is you need, you don't need a favor from somebody else. You need God to make a way for you. You don't need somebody to hook you up. You need God to bless you. You don't need somebody to bring up your name in a room you're not in. You need God to bless you in such a way because when God blesses you, you never regret the blessings of the Lord. When God makes a way for you, he, he never uh, punishes you as a result of walking in that door. But there are some people that will hook you up. But then they always got to remind you what they did for you. There are some people that will help you out. But they always got to remind you. Remember now I helped. You. Yes, I remember. I do not have amnesia. I remember that you helped me out. But don't you forget. I didn't help you, too, because, you know, there's some people in this world who they tell my truth, but they don't tell the truth. Amen. OK, they, they tell their side of the story but they don't tell the whole story. They say, yeah, I helped you when you was down and out, but because I love you, because you, you don't value the relationship the way I value it, you expose me, but I protect you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You just put all my business out there. This is how you know you're really friends with somebody. Can I just pass you for about 37 seconds here? This is how you know you're really friends with somebody. When y'all are real friends and they expose secrets that you told them, and you refuse to expose their secrets. Y'all clapped at first, but when I said that, you said, I, I was hoping you said I exposed this too. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not, that's, that's not how it goes. That's, that's a TMZ friendship. Okay. That's a shade room friendship, but a, a real friendship says just because you did this to me does not mean that I should do it to you. Right. Or better, let's better say it this way. You know there are some people that you are friends to them, but they are not friends to you. You know what I'm saying? They'll call you and they'll be like, man, listen, you got to listen, man. It was crazy. I need your advice on this. You know, what would you do and all that jazz? But when you need advice, you don't call them. You call somebody else, right? So you're doing something for them that they uh, are not doing for you, and that's okay. But Jesus is saying to us that I am all in all. He's saying, I'm a one-stop shop. There's this place in Minneapolis where I'm from, and I remember the year it was built. It's this monstrosity of a place, and it's called the Mall of America, okay? Some of y'all was quiet the whole time. When I said that, you felt glory on that. Oh, shopping, hallelujah. But the, the Mall of America is a place that has every store that you would ever want. They got food stores. They got a grocery store. They got a movie theater. They got paintball. They got a, 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 
uh, aquarium. They got uh, uh, clothing stores for men, clothing stores for women, clothing stores for babies, clothing stores for dogs, all kinds of clothing stores for cats. All kinds of stuff is in there. They got an amusement park in the middle of the mall. Okay? Everything you could want in there. You don't ha- if you cannot find what you're looking for there, you you looking for the wrong kind of stuff. Okay? They, they, they have everything that you need in that one location. But the challenge is that you have to know where you're going when you get in there. Because if you get in there and you're trying to go to Old Navy, but you park on the east side, you're going to have to walk all the way around. But everything you need is in that one place. That's true about God. Everything that I need is in him. If you're wondering in your life who you need to trust, don't go CSI and start examining text messages. Don't say, were they being sarcastic or were they being mean? Were they being funny or were they being obnoxious? Don't trust yourself. Say, God, show me who is in my corner and who is not. Show me who to trust and show me who I cannot trust. And I know what you're thinking. Some of y'all are thinking, I'm pretty good at knowing when somebody is really in my corner and when somebody really ain't. I know what some of y'all think. You're like, I don't need to ask God. I'm pretty good at that. Well, let's call your ex right now. And let's see. If, if they would have, t- right, you, we, we have to acknowledge. How many can acknowledge? I don't always get it right. Sometimes I think I know exactly what I know until I find out more information. And the reason why Jesus says I'm the true vine is he says, because I have all the information. I have all the knowledge. I have all the wisdom. Let's keep moving here. Okay. Somebody say God knows it all. He says, I'm the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch that is in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. I'm going to try to get through this to the best of my ability. But here's my first point. My first point is that God plants us. We're still talking about fruitfulness. Okay. Anybody in here garden in any kind of way? You got flowers and uh, not flowers, uh, plants in your house or something like that. Okay. So some folks here know something about greenery and shrubbery. Uh, So one of the things that matter the most when you are being planted is the soil that you are planted in. And let me help you. Don't throw nothing when I say this now. Okay. Where you are right now is exactly where you are supposed to be. Okay. You are in the right place at the right time in the right situation. Okay. You are not, I I just feel the need to, to rebuke this ideology that you are behind that you, you, you are, everybody else is passing me by. Everybody else is moving forward and I'm in the right place. God is in control and he has you where you need to be for the time that you need to be there. And I know what you're thinking. Some of us are thinking, well, I don't want to be where I am right now. And God says, you don't have to want to be there because some of us have to understand that where you are, even when it doesn't feel good to you, it's good for you. Now, I'm, I ain't going to try to front up in here. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm not no country boy. I don't, I, I, the only planting I did is like I, one day I was eating sunflower seeds and one dropped, okay, and I kicked some dirt on it. That's as far as I go with planting. Nothing, nothing outside that. Uh, but one of the things that I learned because my grandfather, my paternal, uh, uh, maternal grandfather was a preacher and farmer, and he had some crops and some land, and here's what I learned. When it was time for the seed to be planted, they would put the seed in the ground, but that's just phase one. Somebody say phase one. So being planted is the first phase. Guess what the next phase is or the next phase that he took? They put something around the plant to help it grow. Anybody know what that is called? Fertilizer. But he was from the dirty south, Louisiana, so they called it manure. In other words, when it's time for you to grow, God puts you in some nasty situations. you like, whoo, it's about time for me to it's time for you to grow God will place you in a nasty situation he will place you around people who are uh, 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 um, 
I'm not going to use that word that I was going to use. Okay, see? okay, You should be proud of me, PG. I didn't go there. I wanted to say it. But he will put you in a situation. What is manure? Not only is manure nasty, it also smells. It's uncomfortable. Okay? It is not a desired place. But God says, in order for you to grow, you have to step out of your comfort zone. So I know you are not a person who normally wakes up and prays at 8 a.m. You do what you do when you do it. But if you want to grow, God says you might have to place routine around something. Mm -hmm. Some of us be like, that's not my personality. You think getting up, going to work every day is part of my personality? Never, never, never. But I do that because I know something good is going to come into my bank account on the 1st and on the 15th. So I do what I have to now because I know it will pay off later. And disciplining yourself to say, I know I'm in an ugly situation, but I'm still going to be pleasant in an ugly situation shows God's glory through you. Y'all like, I don't want to, I don't want to see God's glory then. Because I want to give people what they give me. But you, you, when you're planted in an uncomfortable situation, God says, oh, you want to grow in your faith? I'm going to test your faith. Oh, you change. Oh, you, you saved, sanctified, and Kentucky fried now. Let me send some people from your old life into your new life and see how you react now. Uh-huh. Because I like to say it this way. Whatever has not been tested cannot be trusted. Uh-huh. So if you are in a uncomfortable situation where people are spreading lies about you or maybe people are telling the truth about you because, you know, sometimes when you've really changed your life and you find yourself shifting and God's doing something in your life, you really God has really brought about a new mind and a new behavior in you. And the truth of the matter is people don't start spreading lies. They start telling the truth. But here's the thing. It's old truth. OK, so, yeah, you 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 start saying things that really was the truth, but that's not the whole story. You know, there are some people right now, hopefully not in this room, but there are some people right now that they know your story and they say, "Ooh, girl, they telling somebody right now. Oh, I got the T on Shantae. OK, you hear me? OK, somebody right now is like, man, let me I got the T on Elijah right now. OK, I got to call you and drop the T that I got on Raquel. I have to let you know some stuff that you don't know. But the truth of the matter is some of us understand. Yes, it can be true. And yes, it was true. But you call it T. But if you invited me to the table, I would call it a testimony because it is not where I am now. It is what God brought me through. And I'm not too ashamed to say what God brought me out of. I'm not too ashamed to say what I used to be addicted to. I'm not too ashamed to say what God brought me. I'm not too ashamed to say how I used to treat people I love. I'm not ashamed to say that I used to hop in any bed that was. I'm not ashamed to say because that's not who I am anymore. The Bible says it this way. If any man, hallelujah, be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away and the new has come. If you know you're a new creature in Christ, put your Bibles down, clap your hands and open up your mouth and say, I'm new. New, 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 everything new, new. Okay. Tell it glad you remember my past I'm glad you remember my sin because when I gave my life to God he threw it into the sea hallelujah of of forgetfulness and he don't remember anymore I'm glad you keeping the receipts but he burned them all away and he paid the price so that I can be new in him but you don't get the newness without the manure See, y'all was happy just about 30 seconds ago. You're like, okay, here he goes. But I, I, I have to tell you this because there are many brands of Christianity that exist in the world. And some of them are saying, if you love God, nothing bad will ever happen to you. They're saying, if you serve God, you'll never get sick. You'll never lose a child. You'll never lose a spouse. You'll never lose a job. But me serving God does not change what happens to me. It changes how I handle what happens to me. Uh huh. And some of us know we're growing, okay? Because you get these messages or people go off on you. Instead of saying what you used to say, you laugh and then you calm down. And you say, you know what? 
I'm not even going there with you today. Okay? And instead of you type a whole paragraph, you say, I'm going to, and then you delete the whole thing and you say, okay, that's maturity. That's growth. You say, oh, you know what? They file. I got to call them out on Facebook today. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I got to say their name. Okay, this is the year of exposés. I'm exposing everything. Okay, and you put the whole post up, you tag them in and everything, and the Holy Spirit say, delete. Some of us put on our headphones and say, Lord, I didn't hear you, so I'm going to put sin. But the truth of the matter is, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, God says, I am trying to do a new thing in your life. I got to move. He says, I'm the vine. You're the branches. Every branch that does not produce. Let's pause here for a second. We go, write this down. Based on what this verse says, look at the progression of the text. This is the progression of the believer's life. This is the progression of your life. Say, this is my life. Come on, say it again. Say, this is my life. You go from no fruit to fruit to more fruit to much fruit. You missed your opportunity to shout this morning. Let me run it back. Okay, take it back now. Y'all, one hop this time. No fruit to fruit to more fruit to much fruit. This is the plan of God for your life. No fruit to fruit to much fruit to more fruit. Okay, Okay, and you don't act the same way in your no fruit stage as you do in your more fruit stage. Okay, all right. So he says, every branch that does not, we're in verse number two. He says, and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes. Oh, my Lord. If you've ever, you've, some of y'all have watched Karate Kid. Okay, I was about to do the kick, but you know. A little too much today <laughs> so but if you've seen karate kid you know mr miyagi right and mr miyagi he he has what kind of trees are those that he had bonsai trees okay and you saw all throughout karate kid okay i don't know if they did it with the new one with um um jayden smith but the, in the old ones he had this bonsai tree and he would clip the stuff off the tree you know what he was doing he was pruning it. And let me tell you what I learned about pruning this week is pruning. First of all, watch me. It's painful. Y'all like, see, I like when you talk the other way. I don't like when you talk this way. Stay on the other stuff. But the truth of the matter is you've got to get both. Uh huh. And we, we, we cannot live with this ideology that God wants us to be happy in the terms of what this world means by happiness. Because let me tell you what the world means when they say happy. They mean that you will not ever have any challenges. They mean that nothing negative will ever happen in your life. That ain't real life. God does not. God talks about this deep abiding joy later on in the voice verse. He don't say, I want you to be happy. He said, I want you to live with your life in joy. But he don't only say joy. He said, I want your joy to be half full. No, no. I want your joy to be a quarter full. No, he says, I want your joy to be what? Full. Uh huh. But we have to make the distinction between the concept of the world's happiness and God's joy. Happiness is based on what happens to you. And, and it's this negative connotation that says, I'll do whatever I want. And if anything steps in my way, well, then it's, it's not a part of my happiness. Let me tell you this. If it was about me being happy, I wouldn't be at church right now. Y'all said y'all didn't say nothing like y'all was the only ones. OK, if this was about my happiness, I, I would be uh, uh, in in Montego Bay right now. OK, sitting sitting on a on a on a beach. OK, with, with, with I don't even smoke weed, but I might be smoking weed. OK, I don't even do cigars, but I might be doing cigars. OK, I, I don't even do coke or none of that stuff. I might have tried it just because I seen Tony Montana do it because I think that happiness is all about self pleasure. But God says, I don't want you to live your life for yourself. Ooh, glory to God. He says, when you give your life to me, now I give you a new sense of satisfaction and happiness is no longer the goal. Joy is. 
because joy happens whether they hire me or whether they fire me whether they say yes or whether they say no whether I get the house or whether I don't get the house whether I'm healthy or whether I'm sick whether it goes in my favor or it seems like it doesn't go in my favor the Bible says it this way about joy all things work together for the good of them that love God and the call according to my purpose so you can include me or you can not include me I still have joy you can invite me or you cannot invite me I still have joy you can acknowledge me or not acknowledge me I still have joy you can tell the lie or you can tell the truth I still have joy because my life is not based on what you do for me my life is based on the true vine and he is the one that defines me so let me get back to this here he said every branch that does not bear fruit is pruned so pruning is painful what is pruning it's taking off pieces of the plant that or the branch that is getting nutrients but is not producing or it is cutting away pieces that are blocking the other pieces from getting the sun that it should get Uh uh-huh so the soil is providing nutrients and he says i'm pruning the places that are not uh, reflecting the growth that they should so this is a lesson to us that we should be very careful we got to watch our mouth when we say what i can't live without because you start saying i can't live without them and then they go on like yesterday. You start saying, oh, I can't imagine life without this situation. And then the situation changes. And you say, who, if I didn't have this job, I don't know what I, I could do. And God says, what you say? Oh, is that so? You, you need your cousin. Okay, well, let me put some separation between you and your cousin. Because I am the vine. And it is not your cousin you cannot do anything without. Uh-huh. He says, oh, okay. You need your horoscope. You shouldn't be messing with that anyway. It's too general anyway. God said, I'm going to cut you off from that and let you know that's not how you need to get your information. You don't have to go to the stars to get your information. You can go to the sun and he will speak directly to you and give you the wisdom and the information you need. He, he said, oh, is that so? He said, oh, okay, you, you. You depend on social media for your self-worth. Okay. Well, let me see how you respond when people don't interact with your posts like you want them to. Mm-hmm. Are, are you going to still believe that uh, I'm working in your life? Are you still going to believe your business is worth it when uh, you post about your family and it get 100 likes and you post about your business and it get one? Right. Are you are you still going to believe that you are beautiful and you're made in the image of God when you post a picture and don't nobody like it? And God says, I want you to know that you cannot define yourself by their standards. You have to define yourself by me. He says, if it's blocking the sun, I'm going to prune it. So some of us, God is saying, you got to decrease Netflix and turn up my word because. First Wives Club is blocking the sun. Okay? Do you hear me? Orange is the new black. It's blocking the sun. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think of another show on there. Um, um, somebody help me out. The Crown. Thank you. Okay? And Polly, the only one who want to act like she watched Netflix up in here. Nobody else. I don't know. I be reading my Bible all the time. I deleted my Netflix app. I don't even know. Okay? The cry, he, he's saying not watch me he's not saying these things are bad he's saying I'm pruning what is not best for you <laughs> let me help you relationships don't have to end because they're bad they just may not be best for you can you not be friends anymore and not villainize them can the relationship be over and you say you know what I'm glad that we were friends as long as we were friends can you get fired from the job and say I'm glad I was there as long as I was there why is it when things don't go your way it's all terrible now yeah it was you know everybody in there was fake and phony anyway well you used to be in there so what is you she's phony she's fake that's the type of people I hate well what is you okay you was there for six years and now because they fired you not because you left they fired you oh everybody up in there is phony okay why is it when the 
uh, 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 the family has turned their back on you. They were no good anyway. We have to understand nuance. Everybody say nuance. It is not that it is bad. It may not be best for you. So God says, because it's not best for you, I've got to prune it. Mm -hmm. And there are some things in your life this year that God's going to prune. And he's going to say, I want better for you. So I'm going to turn the volume down on that. But I want you to turn the volume up on this. Stop getting your approval from things that are inconsistent. He says, I want you to lean on something that's reliable. He says, uh, every branch that does not bear fruit, I prune it. But he just don't prune it. Why does he prune it? I'm in verse number two. Why does he prune it? So that it may do what? Bear more fruit. So God has this principle. Hallelujah. And it's called addition by subtraction. God has this principle that he says, I can do more with less. I have the ability to take what is not enough and then I add my, uh, 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 I want to say sauce, I add my spirit to it. Okay, you take your natural and I put my super on it and I touch it and it makes a difference difference in your life look at somebody next to you and say neighbor allow God to prune your life uh -huh. look at him again and say I know it's painful but it's worth it we have to understand that God knows what he's doing anybody in here raising kids come on wave your hand to me if you're raising kids okay anybody in here raising kids and your kids uh, act like you don't know what you're doing. They be like, Mom, why are we doing this? Dad, why are we doing this? Why I got to do this? I have been here before. Okay? You have not been a parent before. But I have been a child. So I know what I am doing. You got these kids now. You driving. You go through a yellow light. They say, Mom, you should have slowed out. Wait a minute. You can't even spell permit. <laughs> and you trying to tell me how to drive. Okay? How, how are you going to tell me I know what I'm doing? I know what I'm, And you may not feel like I know what I'm doing. But I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you doing homework before you watch TV because I know that one day reading comprehension is going to matter more than loving hip hop. <laughs> you don't know that right. Well, your kids shouldn't be watching loving hip hop, but that's a different thing. Okay. Five-year-olds. Stevie, Stevie. Anyways, I digress. The truth of the matter is that that's how we are with God sometimes. We like, God, wait a second. Why you let him leave? That was a good man. He, he was good. And God said, yeah, he was good for somebody else. But he wasn't good for you. You say, Lord, now, if I would have lied on this job application, I would have got the job. But because I told the truth, I didn't get it. And he say, yeah, I know what I'm doing. And let's take it more serious. You say, Lord. Why did I have to get this? Why, why am I sick? Why did this disease touch my body? Why is this diagnosis touching my body? And God says, if you just wait a little while, you'll be able to see why I'm doing what I'm doing. But understand, just like your son or your daughter is in the back of the car thinking, what are they doing? God say, that's how you acting with me. But guess what? I know what I'm doing. Not only do I know what I'm doing, I made you. Not only did I make you, but remember, what's the plan of God for my life? No fruit, fruit, much fruit. And what's the last one? More fruit. One more time. Let's say it again. What's the plan of God for my life? No fruit, fruit, much fruit, more fruit. That's the plan. And the only thing that stops it happening is your obedience to him. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. Let me go down here a little bit. And I promise I'll finish the rest on Tuesday. He says, abide in me and I in you. 
as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I talked about this on Tuesday, but I just have to go back here because our rhythms are important. I know you have things to do with your time. Make time for God first. Because anybody ever get you wake up in the morning and you get a text from somebody and you're, it just changed your whole day. You, you wake up in the morning, you yawning, breath still hot, and you, you look at your phone and you see this text message. It makes you so mad or so sad. You just put the phone down. You're like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now you on your way to work thinking about the text message. You at lunch thinking about the text message. Now your conversation all day is about what? The text message. I can't believe. Some of y'all are like, no, that don't happen to me. What happened when you go on Facebook? Okay. You be like, yeah, I'm having a good day. Then you see something. You be like, what? Okay. And you be worried about stuff that don't even got nothing to do with. That's the danger in social media. We, we worried about other people's lives. We're scrolling through their lives when we should be focusing on ours. We like, oh man, they are really going through a tough time right now. You is too. You just only post the good stuff. Okay. So let me move here. He says, abide in me. That's why we encourage you to do the rival reading plans because it's time for you to abide with God. It says, Lord, I'm prioritizing you. And this is why I encourage as many people. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your devotional time, but I encourage as many people to do that first thing in the morning because what you do first sets the tone. And if you deal with the stress first, what kind of day you going to have? A stressful day. If you deal with the pain first, what kind of day you going to have? A painful day. If you deal with the drama in the morning, what kind of day you going to have? A trauma fear. But I feel the spirit of Mary J. Blige coming upon me right now. No more drama in my life. Okay? But you have to make that decision. And you have to say, Lord, I'm going to allow you to set the tone for my day. I'm going I'm to, it don't got to, you don't got to spend an hour, but you can say, Lord, what are you saying to me this morning? Through your word. Okay? That's why we do the devotionals. That's why we encourage you to spend time in God's word, reading his word. I got to move here. It says, Here's the last part I'm going to say. It says, if anybody does not abide in me, he is thrown away and the branch withers and the branches are gathered and they're thrown into the fire and burned. In verse number seven, he says, but if you abide in me, this is the, this is, this is it. This is it. He says, if you abide in me in verse number seven, then my words will abide in you. If you spend time with me, you'll become more like me. Guess what? The world doesn't need what I have to offer. They need what I have to offer as Christ is functioning through me. My kids don't need my parenting skills. They need me to be the parent that God wants me to be. Okay? Because if I'm the parent I want to be, I'm locking the door to my room. Y'all cook y'all own dinner. Y'all walk to school. It's negative 10 below. Whoa. I have to say, Lord, what do you desire? My time's up for me to do. God says, I'm the vine. You're the branch. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you wish and it will be done for you. You don't get what you want until God gets what he wants. Let me say it again. You don't get what you want until God gets what he wants. Many of us think that means, oh, so I can ask God for whatever I want. No. He's saying when you spend time with me, you become more like me. And when you become more like me, guess what? You desire what I desire. Uh-huh. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Because some of your kids, you be getting snacks just like me. And your kids did not used to like these snacks. And you could leave them on the table. But after some days and weeks and months and years, now what used to be your snack is now our snack. And in your own house, you got to hide your snacks. Because they have developed an appetite for the same things you desire. This is why coming to church is important. I'm not coming here because I don't have anything better to do. I'm changing my appetite. Uh huh. This is why worshiping is important because I'm changing my appetite. This is why Bible study is important. I'm changing my appetite. I'm not going to wake up in 10 years and be the same woman I was. I'm not going to wake up in 10 years and be the same man I was. God is making me into something greater. 
Okay, I got to stop because my time is done. I'm going to pray for those online. Then I'll open up the altar to pray uh, and then we'll get up out of here. Lord, I thank you today that the entrance of your word brings light. I thank you that we acknowledge that you planted us where we are. I thank you that we can acknowledge that you are the one that is pruning us. I thank you that we can acknowledge that you are the one that is working things out for our good. I thank you that not only do we get the opportunity to love you and serve you, but we also get the opportunity to understand that when we call on you, you hear us. Lord, we pray that you would shape us to be more like you. Help us to love like you help us to operate like you help us to parent and to lead and to love those that you have placed in our lives in a way that brings you great glory and great praise. we're leaning on you we're trusting in you we're depending on you it's in you we live it's in you we move it's in you we have our being bless us today and make us a blessing it's in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen thank you for all of those that joined us online if you have a prayer request, please send in your prayer request. You can go through that link. If you haven't given, you can go online and do that. Um, I know you're not able to be in the building with us right now, but if you put your prayer request in there, the prayer team will be praying for you. If you haven't already done so, please share this. Please share this because there's so much death in the world that God wants to talk with you and he wants to minister to you like only he can. Let me tell you something. The enemy wants you to be distracted because if you're distracted, you'll think you're the vine. You'll think, I can do this. I can do this. I can, I can make this happen. But the truth of the matter is, watch me. If you could have done it, it would already be done. If you could make it happen, if you could forgive that way without him touching your heart to forgive, you would have already forgiven. If you could move on, the way you want to move on without him, you would have already moved on. But God says, you need me. 